here we go. Hopefully that won't adversely affect my uh, performance too badly. Okay, so um, what, what I wanna uh, cover in this uh, first component is, um, is the use of partial functions in Scala. Uh, Scala partial functions are extremely powerful. They are, they pro the Scala language provides special support for partial functions. So they're kind of built into the language uh, syntax, um, how, we, how we use them. Um, and uh, they provide us with a very convenient way of accomplishing certain types of tasks. Um, we're gonna take a whirlwind look at this um, bearing in mind, we, we're not doing, we're not looking exhaustively at these topics, uh, but it is an interesting topic, and it will help explain the second part of, of today's lecture um, in Spark ML. Um, some elements of that. Okay, so a partial function is uh, a function from a domain to a range. So it might be a function that, for example, maps ints to doubles, or it might wrap strings to ints by looking them up in a dictionary, or strings to doubles by taking their square root, or, or um, by uh, you know, converting them to the reciprocal, or what have you. So a function in general maps from a domain to a range, and a partial function is a function that's only defined over a subset of its domain. So maybe, for example, we're dealing with the square root function as applies to reals, and square root if, unless we go into the complex number domain, is only defined for real numbers uh, as its domain, it's the, the, the numbers to which we apply it, if they are greater than or equal to zero, right? Um, uh, it's, it's not defined for numbers um, less, than, uh, less than zero if we're staying purely within the, the real, uh, real numbers. Similarly, log is only defined for things greater than or equal to zero for real numbers. And if we think about a divide by function, or better, better yet, is a is a reciprocal function um, that might be a, a more natural one. Divide by will be another. Um, those are defined only for certain elements of their domain. What is reciprocal defined for? And for reciprocal, I mean one over the argument. Well, be defined for things that are not zero. Um, okay, and, and if we're thinking about taking one over a double, it's for things that are that are something other than 0, 0.0. Uh, divide by uh, similarly, you know, it, it might the function divide by might uh, divide some fixed number, say a thousand, by whatever we give it as an argument, and it's not defined for zero. Okay, um, now it turns out partial functions, as I noted, enjoy special support. They enjoy special support in terms of language semantics and the built-in syntax for the language. So um, we could talk about partial functions in general as a construct. I'd like to now talk about um, definition of partial functions as supported in Scala. And specifically, Scala has a construct. It's a, it's a type parameterized class called partial function. Okay? And partial function um, is a trait in the Scala. It's a, topic we haven't had time to, to cover specifically, traits, but they are useful for sort of classes that can be mixed into things. And a partial function of A comma B, where A and B are types, and so this is type parameterized by the type, um, by the two types involved, that is a, represents a partial function whose domain is, is drawn from A and whose range is drawn from B. Okay, so for example, if we were dealing with something that's reciprocal and it takes a reciprocal of integers, A would be int, B would be double, right? Okay, so uh, this conceptually represents a function that goes from A to B, but it's a special type of function in that it's only defined over a subset of its domain. Um, now, a class that fulfills this trait that satisfies the needs of this trait has to define two methods. Not methods, methods, okay, Meth methods. Um, the two methods it must define are apply and, uh, and is defined at. So the latter is probably pretty clear. 
given this partial function, we could say, hey, are you defined at 0, 0.0? Are you defined at minus 3? Are you defined at plus 1,000? Okay. So a partial function has a certain range over which it's defined. Outside of that range, it's not defined. And we can interactively give elements of the, excuse me, a certain part of its domain under which it's defined. And we can give elements from its domain, particular elements, particular, say, numbers, particular strings, and say, hey, are you defined for this? Hmm? Um, the other component is, is this method apply. This is uh, also a, a method that, that needs to be defined. And the applied method is, represents, captures operationally the application of this function to an element of its domain. Okay, so you recall a partial function is a function that's only defined over a subset of its domain and it maps that subset of its domain to a range. And here we're performing that mapping with apply, okay? Very importantly, if it's not defined for that, apply doesn't guarantee any specific behavior. It could throw an exception. So we should only be applying it to things for which it's defined at is true. It's actually defined there, okay? So we shouldn't be applying a reciprocal function, something that takes one over the integer given to it at zero. We should first find out, okay, is so it defined there, defined at that point, and if so, then we can apply it. Okay, so it allows the function to be applied and to map it to a range. Okay, so I'd like to define some partial functions, okay, in Scala. Now, um, normally I would fire up the Scala shell to do this rather than necessarily going all the way to, to use uh, Zeppelin. But I know you folks probably, some of you only have Zeppelin um, installed. And so um, why don't we go create, um, uh, create a notebook in Zeppelin, okay? So if we go into Zeppelin and we do create a new note here, um, I will say uh, partial, oh, sorry, partial functions, partial functions, uh, partial function exploration. Okay, um, uh, and we will use, uh, we could use, uh, we could use Spark. It's probably not the worst thing to use. I wish we could just use Scala, but I don't see that as a choice here within it. Am I missing it down at the bottom here? All, the last one I see is yeah. pig. Yeah. Okay, so there's no, there's no Scala, okay. Um, why don't what we do then is just to use the one we've been using from last time. Do you guys still have that around? That one from last time? We're going to be extending that. And if you want to go into that, you could start using it. Otherwise, what I'm going to do is to, um, well, I'll, I'll go ahead and do that too. Okay, so here we go. Boom. This is the March 27th lecture. This is in Spark. Um, as the default interpreter, okay? So it's the Spark interpreter within Zeppelin. Alternatively, if you are interested, you could fire up uh, the Scala shell if you, if you have that. Um, okay, so ladies and gentlemen, we're going to experiment some with partial, partial functions. And just to get something out of the way that we'll be needing in a couple of examples, I'd like to do import scala.math.underbar. This is going to impact, import a swack of different math functions for us. Things like square root and uh, things like the sine function and, and uh, uh, other types of, of mathematical operators like floor and ceiling, et cetera. Okay. Um, so we're going to define a partial function in two ways. The first way we're going to define it is as a class, okay? So we're going to have a partial function square root one, okay? We're going to be defining square root explicitly as a, a, an analog to square root as a partial function. So I'm going to go paste this in here, um, but 
the basic deal is that we're going to say, okay, we have a val. Um, it's going to be an instance of the partial function trait mapping doubles to doubles. So it's domain, the thing from which it maps is double, and the thing to which it maps is double. It's a square root of double precision numbers. Um, okay, and, um, and it's going to have two elements. These are exactly correspond to the elements I just mentioned before that have to be defined. Apply and is defined at. So apply takes in a double and it maps it to a double just by calling the square root on it. Is defined at takes in a double and it returns a what? What does is defined at return? It returns a boolean and the boolean indicates whether or not the partial function is defined there. And in this case, we want a partial function that's defined only for double precision values greater than 0, 0.0. Okay? Um, great. So, so I'm going to define that. And you'll notice that I get back an instance of a partial function. Um, it's something that is a partial function. It turns out it's also a function. The fact that I define apply allows me to take that function and apply it to a to a number. Okay, um, so can I, I could apply it to well, let's do a two point zero, right? We get back the golden ratio. Here we go. So I have an apply, and the apply operator just applies. Um, you know, it defines what happens when I call it on in this case a double. Right? That's what apply does. Unapply takes it apart into its constituent pieces. Apply applies it to to the pieces necessary to to make it up and, and gets out a whole object. So here we are. We have um, we have uh, um, we've applied it to a particular number. Now, if we did partial function square root one dot is defined at 2.0. What do you think we'll get? Yeah, we'll get a thing that says true. What could I enter that would indicate false? I could say minus two, right? Minus two, yeah. And it would it would not be uh, it would not be in its legal domain. It's not defined for it, so it'll say false. Okay, um, simple idea. Um, here it consists of two methods, um, and uh, we can use this. And it turns out that some libraries in Scala make use of partial functions, but what's more notable is uh, the built-in support um, uh, provided, well, we're gonna see specifically the case of collect makes use of it, and that's what we're going to be using. Fortunately, you'll be happy to know that there's easier ways to define partial functions. And the main easy way to define them is using the case construct. Now, we've seen case before. Where did we see case before? Anyone remember? We saw it in matching. We saw it in matching. We were matching a set of possibilities. I don't know if you remember that, but we, we saw things like this. So you can do expression, match, and handle different cases. And this makes it look almost like uh, just a different version of the C or, or, Scal or, or Java construct. But, but in fact, you could do much more interesting things. You could do things like this, case X if X even, case X if N if N prime, case N if N square. Um, and it turns out we can do more interesting things yet with regular expressions and uh, you can define a regular expression, match a string, and using the regular expression, it, t it extracts each of the parts that it matches, which is really cool. Because then you can have an expression involving day, month, year. It's extracted them from string by virtue of matching them. So when we have um, case expressions in Scala in general, um, 
we uh, we use them to ma we often use them to match up um, th the characteristics of the um, thing given who's, which is being matched and to extract pieces from them. How these pieces are extracted is via unapply. I don't have time to go into that a lot, but it's via unapply. And you'll notice it can do it for various special cases. Like here, it's saying, okay, if we have something whose year is 1999, then we extract the day and month for that, and we'll handle that case differently than one involved in the year 2000. So we can actually do quite sophisticated things. So those are where you've seen cases, case constructs before. But the truth is that all of those are working by virtue of the fact of defining partial functions. So each of those cases, each of those instances of case, each of those cases of case, if I wanted to abuse English, each of those was defining a partial function. Okay? And partial functions are automatically created when you do case of something or other. Okay? So let's go define the same function again. Okay? using this built-in support via the case construct. So here we'll go. We'll do val pf square root 2 equals, oh, sorry. We have to actually state a type here. As we'll see, it's, it's actually rare in day-to-day -day use of it that you have to state a type when using the case, um, case construct version of it. Um, but you do sometimes have to. And in this case, we're defining a, a method, um, or excuse me, defining a variable, a value that, that uses it. We have to say, hey, it's a partial function. And what is this thing? Well, you'll notice all we do is we do this. We say case x, case x, if x greater than or equal to 0, 0 0.0, um, uh, then we define square root of x. Okay, um, so I'll put it up there on the bigger screen. Case x, if x greater than or equal to 0, 0.0, um, we define this. So here we're saying, hey, for case x, if x is greater than or equal to 0, um, then this uh, partial function square root operator is defined as square root. Notice what we're not specifying. What are we not specifying here? What are we leaving out? Yeah, like what, what to do if it doesn't match this? And this is exactly the point. Here, this case construct defines a partial function. You've delineated what are the different cases that are handled, the different instances of the partial function that are defined. And if it doesn't match one of the cases, guess what? It's what? Begins with an, a U. It ends with a D. Undefined. undefined. It's undefined. Okay. So if it doesn't match one of the, the cases, it's going to be undefined. Okay. Um, that, that is sort of an automatic um, element of this here. So, so let's go uh, take a look at that. Here we go. Um, so this defines a part, uh, a function. And I would claim to you that it's going to automatically know how to do is defined at. So we'll do is defined at minus 2.0. We'll just do the same one we did earlier. And it says false, right? Uh, is defined at um, uh, 2.0. Uh, so at minus 2, it's not defined at 2.0. Uh, it, it is defined. How does it know that? Well, it runs this and it sees you know, sees, okay, is it, was it caught? If so, no. Now, secretly, I believe what's going on under the surface is it's using an option and it's determining did it return none or an actual sum value and, and using that. Um, and in fact, you can, you can readily lift. If you do like a lift of, okay, and I've got to be careful with this. Um, I haven't used this uh, here, but I believe you can do something along these lines. Okay, um, yes, okay, so let's just see. Okay, I'm, I may have to withdraw my, my example here, yes. There's a way you can directly lift this into, a, um, into the domain of, of uh, mapping uh, the input to an option 
of the output. And I'd have to go back and, and find out where it is we call left, but I think it might be we call it, sorry? It's, it's this, but it gave an error. Oh, I don't know what. Oh, I used parentheses. Okay, bad. Uh, I was a bad boy. Yeah, so it, it mapped it to a function that goes from doubles to option of doubles, okay? Um, um, and in fact, there's an unlift that will take functions that go from x to double of, or from a to, uh, to option of b, it will take it into a partial function. Um, that's, another fun that's another issue. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, we see that we can define automatically um, this uh, partial function using this case construct, which is really nice. It, it, it's, quite, it's even sweeter how you can use it in day-to-day -day experience because you don't need to give one of these long declarations. You can just use it along the way. So here we have partial function of that. Now, if we do partial function of this, what, what happens? Do good things happen? Do flowers blossom and, and birds chirp? No, no, it's, it becomes unhappy. It, it actually throws something. Because remember, a partial function can only be applied to things for which it's defined with, for it to be defined. <laughs> and outside of that, its behavior is not defined. It's not, it's not specified. So you're just asking for trouble for, for doing this. You should really be asking, is it defined? Okay, there we are. Cool. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay. Um, so why am I going into this now? Well, it turns out we're going to be using partial functions. We're going to be using partial functions, and we're going to use them in an extremely common case where partial functions are used. It's not the only one, but it's a very common one, perhaps the most common. And it's using a method which we haven't used yet called collect. Okay, The collect method, conceptually, you can crudely think about it Maybe it's not so crude, actually. It's, it's not a bad approximation. As, as giving you what a combination of filter and map would give you. Okay? It's kind of like in a single function call, being able to both filter the input to just those things that are for which your function is defined, and then map using that function. Okay? So normally, let's suppose, let's go take a vector here. Um, We'll take a vector of, and, and just so we can see it very clearly, we'll do, we'll do this. Um, and, uh, you know, something, something along those lines. Um, uh, we could actually produce that automatically through a, a, a call, um, but uh, that's not bad. Okay, um, and suppose we wanted to now here, uh, apply square root to the numbers that are zero or more. How could we do it with traditional filter and map? Can anyone tell me? How would we do that? So we want to apply square root to, to those numbers for which um, it's defined. Otherwise, uh, we just won't include a value. What, what could we do? Yeah, filter, filter, to be include just oops just those things which are greater 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 or equal to zero, we could also ask is positive is another one, and then we map by taking the square root of of them. Right here we go, and through type inferencing, it's able to figure out the requisite types for these guys, and it can do that. Right, we're comfortable with that. Okay, well it turns out collect will allow us to do the same thing but in a more elegant way um, conceptually. Because basically we're going to apply a partial function here. Okay, um, We're going to use call collect. And what we're going to give collect as an argument is going to be exactly the definition we used earlier. Now, yes, we could have just passed in pf square root of 2, and maybe I'll... I'll do that um, here just to show pf square root of 2. Here we go. Boom. Um, oh, oh, mumble, mumble, mumble. Okay. Um, okay, this is uh, for method collect. Do I need 
Is this a case where I actually need this? I can't believe that. Uh, yes, it is. Okay. Wow. Okay. Well, I'll be. Okay. Um, here we go. But alternatively, we don't have to define this ahead of time. We could just say collect and we will actually use what we, we used for the definition of PS, this guy here. We can copy that, case X, this guy here. And there we go. And it will do the requisite uh, type inference here, okay? Um, it realized, okay, X here must be a, a double, and therefore this must be a partial function from doubles and it says, oh, it's returning a double, so it's a partial function from double to doubles, okay? You'll notice what this did. It did exactly the same thing as this filter here, right? It, precisely the same thing, filter and map, rather. Filter and map successively. But it did it all in one sweep. In particular, what did it filter out? What did it filter out? It was filtering by what? Put it positively. What would what things did it keep? Things for which what? It, it was defined. This function was defined, and it just discards those for which it's not defined. Okay, so here, I say it's like performing a map filter and map at the same time because we're filtering out things for which it's undefined, or we're only retaining things for which it's defined. We're only applying it for things which it's Defined. And then we're mapping according to it, right? We're taking the square root. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so, um, so this is the, the collect syntax. Now, I could go into a lot more uh, detail here about, um, uh, about how partial functions uh, are used together with match to accomplish things. And I would say that if you're working with strings, and particularly regular expressions within Scala, you really want to make use of the case constructs, these, these partial functions. You, you know, if you're, if you're dealing with matching regular expressions, I mean, it's just a thing of delight. You can, um, you can define uh, regular expressions just like this, and then you can match them in, in you know, match different subparts of them and extract it and work with it. It's highly recommended. It turns out regular expressions are really well supported within Scala, and they're supported not only with this syntax. You'd say a string. This is a raw string. That's why it's in three triple quotes. Or you could say raw before just a regular double quote. Um, uh, but and, and then you say dot r to indicate it's reg convert it to a regular expression. Alternatively, regular expressions in Scala are indicated using uh, a construct uh, you can use a little bit like like said um, the said construct. So if I wanted to have you know re one, one way to do it is I could say um, uh, you know uh, just raw uh, foo dot r. This is this is a regular expression. There we are. Um, another way we could say it is, is uh, with triple quotes around it. That's, that obviates the need to say raw. This would be RE2. And a final way to say it would be with val. And I've got to get the syntax for this right. Uh, it's a little bit tricky. I think you could basically just say foo. Um, Foo here, uh, and uh, and then then you can say uh, sort of the oh oh okay uh, mumble mumble um, I've got to yeah I thought that was the uh, the correct syntax but I'll have to um, have to look it up in any case um, you can define them using this sort of slash syntax uh, very very sweetly um, so. Uh, when we have regexps, we can um, we can define them and then we can take them apart using this and match things within them, um, uh, and that will allow us to to handle the cases where this regular expression matches. So for cases where this particular regular expression matches, we can extract these things. For example, okay. 
Um, so I am now going to switch. Having covered the basics of these, I'm now going to switch over to our next topic, which is going to be using these in the Spark ML context. Okay. So um, pardon me while I just stop this recording.